Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll dive into the basics of Encloth, a powerful simulation tool for creating this pirate flag animation. Whether you're a beginner or looking to refresh your skills, this tutorial will guide you through a basic knowledge about Encloth and to incorporate dynamic cloth simulations into your own projects. So let's get started. So here we are in Maya. Let's take a cylinder and scale it up like this. This will be our stand for the flag. Now let's take a plane. And then, place it over here like this. Now then, let's increase the number of divisions for this flag. Select this object, then by holding shift, right click, select smooth. Let's increase the divisions to 4. After that, I will set the time range, starting from frame 1, till frame 500. And now select both of these objects, then click on center pivot, delete history, and freeze transformation. Now let's texture this flag. Right click and select assign new material. From here, I will select AI standard surface. Now from attribute editor, click on this color checker box. And then choose file from here. I will add this texture, which I have downloaded from internet. Press 6 on keyboard to see the texture of the model. This is looking good. I don't have to do the UV unwrapping for this object, since this is just a plain surface, and the texture is looking fine. And now let's increase the roughness value to 0.8, so that it does not reflect too much, and be just a bit shiny. Now let's assign a new material to this stand. And now let's apply Encloth Dynamics on these objects. First let's change this Modeling tab to FX tab. Now select the flag, then go to Encloth, and select Create Encloth. After that, select the Stand object, go to Encloth, and then select Create Passive Collider. And now if you hit the Play button, you will see the flag is falling down. Let's turn on the Cached Playback Toggle key and let Maya calculate the simulation for some time. And now if you hit the play button, it will play faster than before. Now select this flag, press 4 on your keyboard for wireframe mode, then go to vertex mode, 
and select all these vertices from this edge of the flag. Then press Shift and Greater than key to increase the selection. While these vertices are selected, by holding Shift key, select this stand object. Now go to End Constraint, then select Transform Constraint. This will attach the vertices with the stand. Now if you hit the play button, you will see that the flag is falling down. But it is attached with the stand from that side. Let's go back to the first frame. From Outliner, select Dynamic Constraint 1. Now you can turn off the visibility of these dynamic properties which are here. Go to Attribute Editor, and from here you can turn off Display Connections, if you don't want to see them. Now I don't want this flag to fall down, I want to create a waving flag. Select this nucleus from Outliner, and then from Attribute Editor, we can adjust the wind speed from here. Let's increase the value of wind speed, and hit the play button to see the result. Now as you can see, there is a wind going on, and the flag is interacting with the wind. But now the flag is looking very stretchy. Select this flag, and go to end cloth shape 1 from Attribute Editor. From here, I will increase the stretch resistance to 200. And also increase the compression resistance to 200 as well. Let's increase the mass value to 3. And increase the damp value to 1. Now select this nucleus, and increase the air density to 5. And let's see how is it looking. I will press 5 for shaded mode to see how it looks. Let's increase the wind noise to 1, and see the result. If you want you can change the wind direction from here as well. In my case, my wind is moving only on X axis, you can change the direction of the wind in all the axis. So here, these are the values of X, Y and Z respectively. Let's add some minimum values on Y and Z axis, so that we can see some variation in the waving flag. Now you can play with these values, and see what looks best for you. Here I have created a simple light setup with AI Skydome light. And applied a HDRI on this. And now let's go to the camera view which I set over here, hit the play button. And let's see in the render view how it looks. This is looking pretty good for now. As you can see, I have kept a solid background color. You can change the background color from here. Under display tab, there is BG color, and you can choose any color as you see fit. Let's go back to the first frame. Now these are the cloth settings that I have kept over here for the flag. I have increased both the stretch resistance and compression resistance quite high, to reduce the stretchiness of the cloth. And down here, let's increase the mass value to 5, to make it little bit heavy. Now then, let's create some torn effects on this flag. For that, go to vertex mode, and then with the help of paint selection tool, I will select some random vertices. You can resize the scale of the brush, by holding B on keyboard and middle mouse drag. And now I will select some random vertices for now. You can go ahead and take your time to create some cool patterns if you want. But for this tutorial purpose, 
I will just select some random vertices like these. After you have selected the vertices, make sure you are on the FX tab. Then go to End Constraint and select Tierable Surface. This will create a dynamic constraint over here, and you can turn off the visibility of these connections from Attribute Editor. Now if you hit the play button, you can see that the cloth is tearing from the selected vertices. And now this is the final setup that I have over here. As you can see, the simulation is cached till the red line, and I can scrub on the timeline to see the animation of the flag. Let's see it in the render view how is it looking. I am pretty much happy with the result. The cloth is looking good, and it is reacting to the wind pretty well. I like this kind of cloth effect which is happening over here. Let me show you how I did. It's very simple. So instead of constraining all the vertices from this edge, I have selected two to three vertices, then leaving some gap, again selected two to three vertices, and so on. And then applied transform constraint with the stand. After that, I increased the strength value to 200, so that these connections have a strong hold onto the cloth. And for this tierable surface, I have increased maximum distance to 0.2, and increased both of these strength value and tangent strength value to 200. For the cloth, I have increased all these resistance values quite a bit, and also added some values on the friction. And down here I have increased the value of mass to 5. These values are all trial and error that I have experimented. They may differ for different situations. Now I will turn off the visibility of these connections, which I don't want to see. Now for my scene, one issue I am facing over here with this cached playback toggle key, is that it is getting error after taking out caches for some frames. So instead of doing that, I will select the cloth which is simulating, then go to end cache, then create new cache, and select an object option box. But before that, we have to set the project to our own folder, so that we get the caches in that particular project folder. Let's go to file, and select set project. From here you can choose your destination path, and then click on set. Then click on create default workspace, and it will set your project in that particular project folder. Now select this cloth, then go to end cache, then create new cache, and select an object option box. And you will see, the folder is set on your project folder, where these caches will be stored. Then click on create, and then select replace. And then Maya will calculate the simulation for the entire frame range, and create cache for each frame. After the caches are complete for the entire frame range, you can scrub on the timeline and play the animation without any issues. And now you can go to your camera view, then render out your animation. So guys, I hope you like this tutorial. Subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications first whenever there is any new video in my channel. Feel free to ask me anything regarding this video in the comments section. Stay safe, and I will see you on the next video.